Hi everyone, Dave Watson here. Today I'm going to do a review of the 5D Mark III in combination with Magic Lantern, a uh, firmware upgrade that uh, is open source. I feel like I've had the 5D Mark III long enough now with Magic Lantern installed that I can give you a pretty good uh, hands-on review. Uh, for someone looking at buying this camera and this combination, uh, hopefully this video will be helpful to you. So the reasons that I was looking at the 5D Mark III uh, was to replace my 7D or to actually upgrade from my 7D. The reasons that I felt like I needed to do that was I'd reached a fork in the road as to whether or not to continue to buy lenses that were full frame or, can, or switch over and start buying crop lenses for the 7D. So compared to the 7D, the 5D Mark III is better at everything. It's higher build quality, uh, it's, it's video quality is better, the sensor is better, uh, HDMI out was added in a firmware upgrade by Canon. Uh, the, set, the 6D came out, which was also full frame, the lower price point. But the focus points, no headphone jack, uh, even though they added GPS and Wi-Fi, still wasn't enough for me to, to pull the trigger. <coughs> and I really wanted it for film. Uh, and I wasn't willing to really go up to the C300 or the C500 uh, to get 4K or because of the price difference. Along, and then along came Magic Lantern Video Raw. Uh, 24 frames per second, 14-bit raw video that blows away the 8-bit compressed video that comes de facto out of the camera. Uh, so good that it actually can compete with RED at least at 1080p. And, and you have the promise of it's getting better on a daily basis. They've, they're working on an MLV format, HDR video, compressed raw, sound and stabilization and features are added daily, plus bugs are fixed. Uh, great combination. So things that I love about the camera specifically, uh, over the 7D, focus speed was magnificent. Uh, it was so much faster than the 7D. Frames per second was a little bit slower. Uh, but autofocus settings are, are fantastic for any type of environment. No more anti-aliasing, no more more. The sensor is better. I get better photos. I get less noise at higher ISOs. Uh, combination with the 600EX flash, it's great. Uh, so add Magic Lantern to that and you get higher video, qu video quality. Like I said, 14-bit uh, dynamic range. You get focus peaking. Zoomed video, which turns the 70 to 200 into a 600 millimeter lens at f2.8, still at 1080, which uh, so crops in on the sensor. You get uh, histogram, scopes, advanced bracketing, all things that, if you want to be able to shoot time lapse, are very helpful. Uh, so some of the things that you're going to have to live with, it's not perfect. Set up and install an update of Magic Lantern software is pretty difficult. Uh, you have to know where to go to find the right instructions that are up to date for the current build that you're on, and that can be a headache. Uh, there were originally pink frames that were showing up, at least in my videos, usually at the beginning. Uh, those have mostly been removed, but uh, there's actually no audio recording while you're recording RAW. So another thing is you the RAW video post-processing I use Rawnizer to After Effects Camera Raw uh, and then into Premiere. That's, that's a process. I'll, I'll show some video of that. Uh, like I said, no audio, so you have to use a separate audio recorder. You can't go into the camera. Uh, sometimes it get, can get flaky. You can get video recording errors where it'll freeze or you get pink frames or it's slow to start recording or stop recording. Uh, you only get 11 minutes of video per 64 gig, so you need to know what you want to shoot and you can't waste time rolling. Uh, shooting in raw video in full hot sun, I actually had some issues with that. Uh, I had to turn off the camera and let it cool down. So is it worth it? Uh, for me, absolutely. Uh, for the price and the quality of features, yes, you'd have to spend 
about six or seven times just for entry level red. Uh, higher if you want to go above that. Plus you don't get photo capabilities that you get with the Canon. Uh, or double on Blackmagic, again you get less features. You, you would get 4K or 6K, uh, 2.5K. All of those things are actually potentially possible with the 5D Mark III as the firmware gets better. Uh, video, so accessories that you need to have. You need to have a computer that's capable of processing the raw video. Uh, it's fairly CPU and memory intensive. Uh, you need Computer Bay makes a great uh, memory card for that's uh, a little over $100. You're going to need uh, a carry speed or some other viewfinder capability uh, to be able to see and focus. Uh, especially to see the focus peaking, you're going to need an audio recorder external. Uh, and, and if you want to be able to do smooth pans, uh, you're going to need a fluid video head uh, on a tripod. So, but that's about it. There's not too much, I mean, there's not, there's obviously things that you can add to it. I've added things over the, over, uh, s over the past several months. So, flying, uh, sliders, all sorts of other things that you can add to it. Uh, map boxes, other things. Uh, but those are kind of the bare necessities of what you'll need. So, that's my review of the 5D Mark III. I hope you found it useful. Thanks.